Hey guys, welcome to the AFL Round 17 betting preview. I'm going through all nine games coming up this weekend, going through what the betting trends are for those matchups, what I'm considering betting, uh, the odds, what the odds have been in their previous meetings, who's been covering, have the games been going over or under the totals, uh, all that information to help you make really good betting decisions this weekend. And just quickly, right off the top, I want you guys to know that uh, the information that I go through and how I make my betting decisions is based on statistics and situational factors for different teams, so lineups, those kind of things, not just based on my opinion of teams, which teams I like or don't like. Back like over 12 years ago when I first started betting, that's how I place my bets. So I'd just go, oh, which team won last week? Oh, they're in good form, those kind of things. Um, but that didn't really work out for me. And it wasn't until I started, you know, diving deeper, learning more about how to actually research and choose the bets um, that things turned around for me. And that's why I've been able to do this uh, for so many years. So we're using things like the bet finders where we can go through, analyze the statistics for every single team, go through, see uh, where their strengths are, where their weaknesses are, and how potentially opposition teams can take advantage of that. Uh, we look through key players in and out for different sides and how that's going to uh, affect their overall performance and also uh, all the betting trends and that information. So, uh, so far, this season, we'll notice away sides have a better record covering the spread. Underdogs have a better record covering the spread. Um, and especially uh, away underdogs uh, is the key factor right there going 42 to 36. And then same for our total points betting. Uh, our game's going over under the total. Not just, you know, overall on the season, uh, but teams in different situations. I posted some videos to my Instagram uh, and TikToks this week uh, talking about these different factors. Uh, so, for example, Carlton in their away games, seven of the eight have gone over the total points line. And Gold Coast at home, seven and two to the over. Away from home, one and five to the under. And I'll uh, make a point about that when we talk about the North Melbourne uh, Gold Coast Suns game uh, coming up this weekend. Uh, last weekend, uh, five of the nine games went over. Underdogs won five of the nine games. Uh, so a good week for uh, the underdogs. The two weeks prior to round 14 and round 15, uh, favorites won all 12 games across those two weeks. So underdogs turned it around uh, a little bit. Uh, the only favorites who won, uh, Brisbane Lions got over Melbourne late there. Uh, the Western Bulldogs beating North Melbourne uh, didn't cover the spread. Carlton uh, beating Richmond and then Hawthorne beating West Coast. Uh, Carlton and Hawthorne were the only two favorites who covered the spread last weekend. Uh, the other seven games, uh, the underdog covered the spread in all of those matches. So now uh, looking ahead to this weekend's game. So Friday night, Collingwood versus Essendon. And I'm recording it later in the week this week um, compared to normally. Normally I record this video uh, early on a Tuesday morning. Uh, so there's a lot less information out by that point in regards to team lineups, who's going to be playing uh, and weather conditions as well. Uh, Collingwood are 11 and a half point favorites for this game. They met back in round seven in the Anzac Day match, which ended in a draw, 85 points all. Essendon uh, covered the spread there at plus 15 and a half. So uh, the lines tightened up a little bit now for this matchup, obviously at the same venue. Uh, both sides coming off losses last week. Interestingly, Essen have a really good record um, against Collingwood in terms of covering the spread. They've covered eight of the past 10. Um, Collingwood have been winning those matches, though. They've won four of the past five, and then you have the draw in there. Statistically, uh, there's really not a great deal between these two sides. Uh, you'll notice Collingwood, the slightly better attacking side, and also the slightly better defensive side, but they're both um, bottom half of the league defensively uh the key area for this game i feel like that's best to target is the disposal markets uh you'll notice here uh collingwood can see the second most disposals to opposition players and the most handballs um and essendon are kind of mid-pack they're not really um that strong in this category either so uh, both teams should be able to take advantage of that especially essendon who are a high disposal team ranked second in the league uh, so that's the way I'm most likely going to be playing that game. feel like from a side perspective, um, it's one that could go really, really go either way. I'd be leaning towards the either side 1 to 24, as I feel like it could be um, a 1 to 2 goal game either way. I do expect it probably is going to be close. Um, Collingwood just aren't um, as in good form as we saw uh, last season and the year before, uh, where they were winning like a lot of those close games. And 
The main thing Essendon probably need to do to win this game is just improve their scoring a little bit. Uh, their last month has been uh, pretty average. They put up 122 against West Coast, uh, but the three games outside of that, uh, they haven't scored over 80 points and haven't really been playing super strong defensive sides either during that time. Um, from a total perspective, at 167.5, I think that number is a couple of points low, um, but just because of Essendon scoring, um, I don't want to um, play into the over there. North Melbourne versus Gold Coast. Uh, Gold Coast minus 18 and a half. Uh, so fairly big favorites here. Uh, they met earlier this season uh, in round nine up in Darwin. Gold Coast were minus 40 and a half for that game and won by 68 points. Uh, so did win pretty convincingly. Uh, the main question mark here is since that game, North Melbourne is definitely in better form at the moment. And Gold Coast still have issues uh, playing on the road, which is a major area of concern for them. Uh, so far this season, Gold Coast at home averaging 105 points. Away from home, they're averaging 59 points. So <laughs> um, that's uh, almost half the amount of points in away matches. Obviously, North Melbourne are the worst defensive side in the competition, conceding 108.6 points a game. So they don't get a better opportunity than oh they won't get a better opportunity than to improve their away scoring than they do in this matchup. I do think Gold Coast do win. It's an important game uh, for them to get the win on the board. Um, I would lean towards them at the 1-39 to mark. I feel like North Melbourne keep this game fairly close. And especially with the home team winning 11 of the past 13 and covering 7 of the past 8 in this matchup. Uh, so I do like, I think Gold Coast win, and but I don't think it's going to be a huge blowout margin. Uh, Gold Coast also have won four of the past five, um, three of those with home field advantage. Uh, six of the past eight head-to-head -head have gone under. Uh, obviously, Gold Coast away scoring leads towards the under, and I mentioned off the top that they're a big underside on the road. However, I do think, you know, these two teams can pile on points. Their past two have been very, very high scoring. Uh, 172 points have just cleared that number in the last matchup. And then the game prior when they met in Tasmania uh, was a 230-point game uh, in that matchup with 173.5 as the total. Um, even though they have a history of their games going under, I'd be leaning towards the over of that number. Um, but definitely prefer to bet on the Gold Coast on the side. Port Adelaide versus the Western Bulldogs. Western Bulldogs minus two and a half. Uh, Port have won the past three in this matchup. However, uh, the way team has covered seven of the past nine. So um, definitely can't rule out, you know, uh, the Western Bulldogs here and um, them coming off the bye. I feel like this is a really, really winnable game for them. Port Adelaide at home two weeks ago, um, obviously copped uh, plenty of criticism for their performance against the Brisbane Lions. Um, they bounced back last week with a close win uh, against St. Kilda, just getting over the line by two points. This game, I definitely lean towards playing the Bulldogs. I think they're going to be a bet at either the minus two and a half or the money line. Uh, I think they're just in a better form. I think Port's just slipping a little bit. Their last about month or so, Port Adelaide, um, hasn't been really great. However, they have played good opposition in that time. And that's one thing I'm always cautious of is what's the quality of the opposition they've been facing. Their past four games, as I mentioned, they beat St. Kilda, lost to Brisbane Lions, lost to GWS, and lost to Carlton. Uh, so three of those teams are all top eight sides. And so it's not that much of a major issue. Uh, Western Bulldogs, the game prior to their North Melbourne game, so before their bye, they put up 149 points against Fremantle, who are the second best defensive side in the competition. And I think they're definitely going to be good enough to win against Port Adelaide, who just aren't in the best form right now. So I uh, definitely like the Western Bulldogs to be winning. Uh, three of the past four between these two sides have gone over uh, with a total at 166 and a half. Um, it's a fairly low number. I'll just double check what I make this number at. Um, I have this number at 173. Uh, so I do feel like this number is slightly low. And with three of the past four going over, we've seen these games be higher scoring. Uh, both Western Bulldogs currently a third ranked attacking side. Port Adelaide about mid pack, but they do generate the most shots on goal. Uh, Western Bulldogs are stronger defensively. Um, so do lean. I do like Bulldogs to win and lean towards the other over as the other selection in this game.
Uh, next matchup, uh, Geelong take on Hawthorne. Geelong have won four of the past five in this matchup. They're 10 and a half point favorites here. When they met earlier in the season back in round three, the Cats were 15 and a half point favorites, covered the spread there like they did in the past two matches. Uh, at plus 10 and a half, I'd lean towards Hawthorne here. Uh, there's two ways I'm considering playing this game. Uh, the plus 10 and a half, or the other option is taking Hawthorne's team total to go over uh, the line which I think is currently set at the mid-70s, um, 76 to 77. Uh, the reason being is uh, Hawthorne without James Slee this week uh, is a big out for them, uh, especially defensively. And so Hawthorne aren't going to win this game playing a defensive game style. So they also get Luke Bruce and uh, Mitch Lewis back into the lineup. So that strengthens their forward line. And the way they're going to give themselves the best chance of winning this game is by putting points on the board. And we've seen over recent weeks that they have been able to do that. Uh, their recent games, uh, they put up 94 points last week against West Coast, 97 the week prior, then 85 against GWS, and then 200 plus games against Adelaide and the Brisbane Lions. Uh, there's really no reason they can't put up a score uh, against the Cats here. Uh, Geelong currently rated uh, 15th in points conceded, conceding 87 points a game. So that's the way I, I really like Hawthorne to uh, score 80 plus points in this matchup and clear that over total points line. Plus you have in this matchup four of the past five going over the total points line. So they've let themselves two high scoring games. Uh, the total is a little bit higher this time around at 171 and a half than their past three meetings. On to the Saturday night games, GWS at home to Carlton. Uh, Carlton have a very good record in this matchup, winning four of the past five and covering five of the past six. Uh, Carlton in really, really good form at the moment. Uh, GWS in really, really bad form. Um, just keep on slipping down the ladder. They've lost uh, three of their past four. And they've also lost six of their past eight games where uh, Carlton come into this matchup winning five straight games. I haven't had like a number of looks at this matchup and I do, I definitely think Carlton win and cover the spread, even though uh, they're away from home. However, I do feel like it is a little bit of a trap. Like I wouldn't have been shocked if I saw Carlton minus 14 and a half, minus 16 and a half easily for this game, uh, just with the way uh, GWS has been playing and the amount of points that Carlton have in them. They've topped 130 in their past two games against Geelong and Richmond. And uh, when you look at GWS, um, they haven't scored over 80 points uh, and to go all the way back to round seven uh, against the Brisbane Lions. So Carlton just have way more attacking firepower, which will be very difficult for GWS to keep up with. Uh, I've mentioned previously, Carlton aren't the greatest defensive side. Uh, they're ranked currently, as it stands, 13th in points conceded and ranked 11th in opponent shots on goal. So... Uh, GWS will obviously get their scoring chances against them. However, GWS defensively give up uh, the 14th most shots on goal to the opposition. So Carlton's going to get their chances and they're going to win this game. There's nothing really uh, from a lineups perspective either uh, to get you too worried about uh, Carlton. Uh, they also get Tom DeConing back into the lineup and also uh, GWS without Josh Kelly for this matchup. So Carlton win and cover. I do feel like there's something funny going on here. I just, you know, if you look at their recent matchup when Carlton were at home, they are two and a half point favorites uh, and won that game by 19 points. Uh, when they last met at Giant Stadium, Carlton were minus eight and a half in round three last season. And Carlton obviously playing uh, a lot, lot better uh, even now than they were back uh, at the beginning of last season. So to be only minus five here, just raises the eyebrow a little bit, but um, I feel like just backing Carlton here to win and cover uh, is the best play in that game. Fremantle versus Richmond. The past five between these two sides have gone under the total point slide. It's set at 166 and a half. So uh, equal highest for their last five meetings. Uh, Fremantle, big favorites here, $1.07 minus 44 and a half. Um, this is a game I'm not super excited about betting into from a side or total perspective. Fremantle should win and win fairly comfortably. Uh, they're playing really, really well. If you take out that game uh, against the Western Bulldogs, um, then their form outside of that uh, is very, very good. 
and obviously got over the Swans last week by one point in Sydney. Uh, back at home here, uh, they should take care of Richmond. Um, they've covered four of the past five against them. Uh, the way I'd probably most likely be keen to play this game uh, is taking uh, three mental players to rack up the disposal. I think they're just going to get plenty of ball, Dustin Martin, out for Richmond as well. Richmond can see the most disposals to the opposition, the most uncontested possessions, and Fremantle are the number two uncontested possession side and also ranked fourth in disposal. So they're going to get plenty of ball. Their players are going to really rack up the disposals, and uh, we can definitely capitalize on that uh, with the Freo players. So that's how I'll be playing that game. But Fremantle uh, should definitely be winning. Uh, Melbourne versus West Coast. Melbourne, big favorites here, $1. fourteen minus thirty three and a half. Uh, Melbourne were better in their last game against the Brisbane Lions, but um, then really not playing all that well. And I definitely couldn't get involved with them at $1.14 or minus 33 and a half. However, on the road, don't want to take West Coast either. Uh, this is probably one game I want to stay away from this weekend. Um, these sides haven't met at the MCG since 2014. 10 of their past 11 games have all been played in Perth. Um, this obviously being played in Melbourne favors uh, the Demons, and they they should win. Like all things being equal, Melbourne should win this game. However, they did meet earlier round ten this season, and West Coast won by thirty five points as a thirty four and a half point underdog. So, interestingly, Melbourne are a lower line here than they were playing over in Perth. Um, that alone, like, just instantly pushes you towards Melbourne. However, they did lose that game, and they're just really not playing well. And uh, Petrarca not being in the team um, definitely impacts them. Uh, they should win, but just it's just a game, like, I feel like it's one of the easy ones this weekend to stay out of. Uh, St. Kilda versus the Sydney Swans. Uh, Sydney, a minus 20 and a half here, dollar thirty one to bounce back from their loss last week. And without Max King in the lineup for the Saints, I feel like it's going to be a really tough ask uh, for them to find enough points to beat the Sydney Swans. Uh, historically, these games have been low-scoring defensive matchups. The past four have gone under. The total at 163.5 is 10 points lower than it was last time they met at this venue, and that game did go under. St. Kilda uh, won the most recent matchup, and they have covered five of the past six versus Sydney Swans, but um, I find it really hard to find a way to get Sydney beat in this game. Uh, they'll have the added motivation of losing last week, and sometimes that defeat uh, pushes you um, back to, you know, lift your performance again and remove that little bit of complacency. And uh, as I mentioned in previous videos, if you watched the other weeks, that, that the Swans have been slow starters. Their first quarter is their worst uh, of the four quarters. And basically from quarter time, um, they just dominate opposition sides. St. Kilda are the second worst or third, second to third worst uh, team in the first quarter. So it's very unlikely they get the jump here on the Swans. And from that point forward, um, the Swans should run over the top. Uh, St. Kilda are a very good fourth quarter side. Uh, so they haven't fully decided. I'm probably just going to take the full game line on the Swans here at minus 20 and a half. But I also uh, may look at uh, playing till the three quarter line uh, because up to that point, um, Sydney should be dominating this game. And, you know, St. Kilda could come back slightly late. But I feel like just with their. Uh, Max King being out, their leading goal kicker, it's going to be really hard. The Swans are the number one attack, number one defense. And uh, St. Kilda uh, ranked 15th in points four and 15th in shots on goal so far this year. Also ranked 14th in inside 50. So they're going to have very, very limited opportunities. And um, Sydney should get the job done and get it done fairly comfortably. Then the final game of the round, Brisbane take on Adelaide at home. Uh, Lions are 28 and a half point favorites. They've covered four of the past six against the Crows. Uh, the four of the past five meetings have all been played at Adelaide Oval. Uh, their last matchup uh, was round nine this season and ended in a 90 points all draw. The Crows were six and a half point favorites there. So uh, massive turnaround in the odds for this matchup. Uh, Adelaide were $1.68 favorites and now $4.60 on the road. Uh, Brisbane, uh, pretty much since their buy, I guess you could say, have been um, a significantly better side. Um, their passport, they had the loss to Hawthorne in round 11. 
And then their four games since then, they put up 114 points against the Bulldogs, 126 against the Saints, 152 against Port Adelaide, and then 86 last week uh, against the Melbourne Demons. Confident Brisbane win this game at home. Uh, Crows are really not playing all that well. They've lost three of the past four games. Uh, got away with a win last week against GWS. They've had three straight home games. Now um, have to go to the Gabba and um, a venue they don't play at all that often. They did play there well uh, last season in round 22 uh, and only lost that game by six points. However, uh, haven't played there all that often, which obviously um, is a concern, and Brisbane play very, very well there at home. I'm not completely sure how I want to play this game. Uh, looking at most likely taking the Lions team total to go over, feel like the total at 168.5 as it currently stands. Uh, fine weather is predicted for this game. And uh, Brisbane should be able to um, kick a 95, 100 plus score uh, against the Crows based on the way they've been playing. And um, these matches have been historically high scoring with the past five all going over. Uh, so I'll quickly run through, recap. Uh, Collingwood versus Essendon. This is a player prop game. Um, take advantage of the Pies giving up a high number of disposals. Um, Gold Coast versus North Melbourne. Lean towards the Gold Coast Suns of 1 to 39 just due to their road form. Like the Bulldogs to beat Port Adelaide. Uh, Hawthorne, uh, team total to go over is the most likely way I'll play that game. Uh, Carlton minus five and a half against GWS. Uh, Fremantle versus Richmond, uh, playing the props, uh, player prop disposal markets on Frio there. Uh, we'll also look at the fantasy markets as well. Uh, Neds and Ladbrokes do offer those as one of the main companies. And you can definitely um, find spots of uh, players who... Um, generate high numbers of marks and can also hit the scoreboard plus obviously disposals um can definitely capitalize on that but disposals probably the main way i'm playing it melbourne versus west coast that's my stay away game i uh, like the swans to win and cover against st kilda and brisbane's team total to go over to close out the round against the crows uh, if you want to get all my plays uh, for every single day uh check the link in the description you can also get access to uh all the bet finder tools for uh, Every sport that you're betting on, it goes through. You can use the bet finders to get break down all the statistics in a really easy way so you can analyze the game and make really smart betting decisions because uh, the more effort that you can put into researching uh, the games, the better your results are going to be. So that's why I've made this available to the public. I've been using all these tools uh, for about 10 years now since I first created them in 2014. And only this year is the first year I've made it available for uh, everybody to use as well. So definitely check it out. Also coming this weekend, I'm going to be uh, recording uh, free training going through all the strategies I use uh, to find bets on sports and racing and how you can overall uh, make money every year from betting uh, with a systematic approach. So I'll uh, put the link in the description. Definitely check it out if you want to make money betting every single year. Thanks guys for watching.